everyone welcome to my channel my name is Safwan and today I'll be taking you through how to enable web APIs for your power pages or power portals so there are four settings that you need to configure first one is adding site settings second one is adding table permissions third one is web roles and fourth one is adding wrapper ajax function to your portal um, in this video I'll sort of by adding the wrapper ajax function this function was written by microsoft and it takes care of um, not having to handle authentications so if you search on google wrapper ajax function power portals or power pages it'll probably take you to um, this page here i'll put the link in the description below all you need to do is copy this and go to your um, portal management and go to your web templates so here we are um, the best place to add in this function would be in the footer so go into the footer of your web app scroll down where you see this window.onload oops window.onload and then just before this function closes paste in your uh, the web api safe ajax function that you copied save and close and before I click sync configuration, I just want to show you that I, this is my portal and I don't have any web Ajax or web a safe Ajax call here, uh, but I will have it after I sync config and I refresh this. And web API, so you can see that I've got the web API safe Ajax call. Now what I'll do is I'll make a call to one of the tables in my portal, and this one's going to be the contact table. So I already have the code to get data from the contact table. I got this code snippet from the Dataverse REST Builder. That's an amazing tool. I'll make another tutorial on it. Once you run it, you are expected to get an error message. And in this case, I've got their resource not found. The reason why I've got this area is because I haven't enabled the site settings. So let's go to the Microsoft Docs, and all you need to do is again search on Google uh, Power Portal site settings for web APIs, and it will probably take you to a page like this. You need to add in three uh, site settings. Uh, first one is web API table name enable, second one fields, and the last one. If your portal is greater than 9.4, then disable all data. Back to my site settings, um, you can see that I don't have any of those yet, so I'll go ahead and add them. So I've added the three site settings um, Web API contact enable, contact fields, and contact disable all data filter. So if you're wondering where I got this contact from, um, even if your table name is contact, you need to make sure that you're using the logical name of the table and not just any name. Um, and you can get that if you have the level up extension, Chrome extension, you can click on the hamburger, go to meta, entity metadata, and you can type in contact, and it will show you the logical name of your contact table. Okay, so that's a display name, that's a plural name, and this is a singular entity name always use this name here for your web API settings. Once you've done that, go ahead and sync configuration, go back to your um, portal. I don't need to refresh this. I'll just make the call again and let's see what error we get now. So this time we get, uh, you don't have permissions error. Um, the reason why you might get this one is because you may not have signed in. So Go ahead and sign in. And once you're signed in, I'll make the call again. And let's see what error I get this time. Again, you don't have table permission, uh, which means that you haven't, because you've signed in and you're still getting this, it means that you didn't uh, set up the table permission properly. So let's go back to our site settings or portal management. And let's scroll down to table permissions. So if you remember our list of things to do, table permissions was the second thing. And you can see that I don't have any um, contact table table permission. So all I need to do is go 
and add in permission. So I'll just name it contact global because I'm going to give it a global permission. And then get my contact table and select light I want it to access and access type equals global. And because I'm giving global permissions, I'm just going to give read permissions so no one can mess things up. Go ahead and save it. And this would then enable you to add in some web roles for these permissions. And what this basically means that uh, you're saying, you know, who has this global permission? Uh, by default, you have administrators, anonymous users, and authenticated users for your portals. Um, I'm just going to give all authenticated users global permissions to read my contact table. I'll save and close. And then I will think configuration again. And I will actually, I don't need to refresh. I can just make the call. And this time, voila, it worked. So you can see that I've got, um, I've, I was able to retrieve all my contact information from my contact table. Um, and this was after um, I've added in the table permissions and the web roles. That was all for this tutorial. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out or just comment below.